choose what you want to obey. No, that's true. You know, that, that I, I think that's the way I summarize it. I guess. Right. You right, can't pick okay. and choose what you want to obey. In other words, you're saying all of God's law is to be uh, recognized and 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 done as God says. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I think that'd be fair. Right. Okay. That's that's the way I see it. Okay. Thank you much. All right. All right. Thanks for your call. You're on the word from the Lord. Hello? You're on the word from the Lord. Turn your, oh. t turn your TV down. You're on the air. I'm on the air right now? Yeah, you're on the air. Oh, hello. I'm, uh, this is Brock. T turn your TV down just a little bit. All right, go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, uh, this is Brock Neubauer from Waterville, Michigan. I'm here with Johnny Robertson. He's visiting my family. He had a gospel meeting this weekend, and uh, we just wanted to tell you guys we're all watching. All right. You watching online? Yeah, we're watching online. All right. All right. Well, appreciate that. Hello to everybody in Michigan. <clears throat> we're, we're, we're all fine here, and it was just, uh, it's really encouraging to see a, a broadcast like this. All right. Well, I'm I'm glad it's going well. We had you had some good calls already, and that's uh, what we've been we've been uh, listening. It'd be nicer if uh, if the prophet Bill Daniels himself were here. How would you yeah. folks? How would folks in Michigan like to see that? Oh, we would love to see that. We we were really interested to see the footage that you had there. We were you had people <coughs> rolling in the floors or anything like that. Well, there was there oh. was we just we, I just hadn't showed it. There was one lady that was. Rolling in the floor, and uh, you know, of course, they always have to cover them up because right. we can't be immodest when the Holy Spirit takes over. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, yeah, very interesting that the Holy Spirit makes people do such uh, indecent things. You know, <clears throat> so uh, well, when you come come down to come down to North Carolina and see us sometime, and we'll uh, we'll put you to work. Oh, we'll we'll definitely come down. My uh, hold my dad and. Uh, We'll, we'll probably share and visit real soon. All right. We'll look forward to that. Okay. Look forward All right. to that. All right. Good night. Uh, rest of your broadcast. All right. Thank you. All right. Good night. <clears throat> All right. From the great state of Michigan. You're on the word from the Lord. Yeah, I wondered that. You had debated his Muslim bowl right back. What happened to that Muslim guy? I don't know what happened to him. Okay, all right. I don't know what that was about, but <clears throat> other than phone beeping. Uh, I'll go ahead and take it, Brandon, if you let it through. All right. You're on the word from the Lord. Good evening, James. How are you evening. doing? I'm doing well. Well, was Prophet Bill at what church? I'm sorry? Which church was he, is the Prophet Bill was at? Where was he at? In Mayadan? Is that where he was at, Mayadan? Yeah, yeah. He wasn't at a, at a church building. He was at the VFW. At VFW. Yeah. Okay. I he said that was the first time he'd ever been to Mayadan, and uh, I was glad that, uh, that we knew about that. I appreciate them putting us on the mailing list. And, again, I'm not going to say who, was, who it was on their mailing list that... Uh, that got the information because we want to keep tabs with him because we don't we certainly don't want him in Mayadan. You know, he's already done enough damage in this area. So where is he originally from? I believe he's set up in Kernersville. Kernersville, North mm -hmm. Carolina, huh? Right. Okay. Uh, uh, earlier the gentleman called in about the book that he said he had received from y'all. Yes, sir. What was the name of the book? Uh, that particular book was Why I Am a Member of the Church of Christ. Okay. And I think it has like 23, 26, 30 some odd uh, little chapters in it. Each chapter is a is a reason why, uh, you know, to be a member of the Church of Christ. You know, okay. What, what, you know, I'd what, like to receive that book also. Okay. I'd like to read that one myself. Uh, okay. Probably pick it up sometime or another, but... Uh, I'll get I'll get with Johnny or you or somebody one time over here at American Legion Boulevard. 
Okay. And pick that, that book up. That Are you, uh, uh, is this, uh, is this who I think it is? I want to say your name cause, just in case. Yeah, it probably is, yeah. Okay. Uh, We'll probably well someone's probably be over there tomorrow sometime. Are you uh, are you free tomorrow? No, I'm headed to Richmond to see uh, Sarah Palin tomorrow. We'll big rally in, in Richmond for that. Okay, all right. Well, what, a, what about Tuesday? I care about that. What about Tuesday? You be coming back? Tuesday, yeah. I'll be, okay. I'll, well, when y'all have a Bible study, I may just drop in over there then. Okay. Well, Tuesday nights when they have Bible study at American Legion. Right. And uh, but. Uh, if nothing else, we we can get you one at the tent. You gonna be coming to the tent? Uh, yeah, and remind me of the dates while it's, you it think about the twi- it. I need to write that down. It starts the twentieth. The twentieth October. The twentieth of October. Twentieth of October. Lord willing, Lord willing, and the snow don't fly. And it goes till when? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> it go just goes till. Till you get tired. Well, we're going we're going to try a week and then and then uh, see how we're doing. Okay. Uh, well, it, it's going to start I'll getting. I'll be there on the twentieth, and the location is where now again. It's uh, three thirty-five Mount Cross Road. It's right by Leggett. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I know where you. Uh, town and I think it's Leggett Town and Country is the actual Leggett name of it. Town and Country, just as you start up Mount Cross Road uh, on the right. left hand side. There. That's right. They're right there in that open asphalt place that used to be a parking lot for Lowe's. That's that's correct. That's correct. All right. Right yeah, across from exactly UP, U, right across from UPS and the mall. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, right there across from Wentz Motors and the old bus station, right down in that area. That's exactly right. Exactly right. That's the way it's going to be. Yeah, I will see you over there. And, okay. And do that. Now, I appreciate it. Y'all have a good evening. All right. Thanks for your call. Out here. Bye bye. All right. Y'all be talking about the tent meeting, October twentieth. Somebody's on, uh, you're on the word from the Lord. Yes, how are you this evening? I'm doing well. How are you? <clears throat> I'm doing pretty good. I'd like to get one of those little books, uh, why, why You Are a Member of the Church of Christ. Okay. All right. Um, how do I get it? Well, we'll put you on hold and uh, have a gentleman that'll get your name and address. How about that? Okay. And another thing is, uh, what time of night is that tent meeting going to be? Is it going to be at 7? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And we'll have a we'll have a heater going. So, <laughs> it, it I mean, it, even though we don't know what the weather's going to be like, we're going to have a heater going. All right. So, we, and we uh, last year we had it in Eden in October, and we got us a heater. Right. And uh, it would heat that tent up, and it was nice and cozy. So. Oh, I came out one night out, out in Eden. It was. It was nice and warm. Okay. All right. Are you from Eden? No, I'm from uh, Dry Fork. Dry Fork. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think I know who you are. All right. Oh, you do. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, it's, All right. it's good well, to talk I'll to you put again. Put me on hold so I can get my address. Okay. All right. I'm going to put you on hold. All Let's... right. All right, Brandon, line three is for you. All right. Talk to me. All right. We're waiting on... All right, you want to work from the Lord? Hi there. Hello. I was calling to make sure to see if that's where you was going to be at in Danville. I would love to attend. Okay. All right. Where are you? Or where are you located? In Ringgold, right outside. In Ringgold. Okay. All right. Well, you know where it is. Uh, yeah. Le- Leggett's yes. town and country. Yeah. Yeah. We moved up here about I guess it was about ten years ago, and I have been to Brother Daniel's church. Bill Daniel. Quite, okay. Yeah, Brother Daniel. Yeah. Over there in Kernersville, quite a few times was when we first moved up here. My husband's family attended his church quite a bit. What you showed me was very interesting, and I would love to come and see. Um, I'd love to come and see you. Okay. Well, we'd be glad for you to come. We'd be glad for you to come. Uh, I just I want to say this. You know, I, you know, we don't have any ill will against any of these guys, but the problem is, you know, men like this, they're not they're not teaching the truth. And and the truth is what sets you free. So if you're not teaching the truth, then the only thing you could be doing is putting somebody in bondage, right? Exactly. And what what I agree with, I agree with that too. And you know, we we've all been touched, and, and God's healed us. But God's healed us. Brother Daniel's didn't do it. And I'm not going to pay him for. I mean, I I don't agree with that one bit about having to give money. Right. 
you know, we just, well, we I'm, go up there and whenever we pray, we pray to God. We don't pray to, you know, put a minister up there. Right. You well, know, we understand that you guys work hard at everything. I, I understand that. Well, the problem, the problem that, uh, you know, that I have with, with what these guys say about healing is, you know, they all want to say, well, God does it. God does the healing, but he does it through them. And I'm going to say, well, you know, six to one, half a dozen the other, right? Right. I mean, if I go to the bank, if, uh-huh. I, if I give you a check and you go to the bank and cash it, now who gave you the money, me or the bank? The bank. No, I gave you the money. Uh, well, yeah. But, okay, but, but, I'm but, but, but see, but both, of, but, but both would be right. I gave you the money and the bank gave you the money. Exactly. You see? And so it, what they want to do, they want to mince words. See, when yeah. you start saying you heal, oh, no, God heals, but they're the vessel, well, then you did it. So, yeah. um, and, and so, uh, uh, you know, there was a gentleman that was there with us the other night, and he had some serious health problems, and I don't know why Bill Daniels didn't, didn't heal him of those serious health problems. He spends a lot of money every year on those health problems that, you know, apparently God didn't tell Bill Daniels about. So, yeah, uh, yeah we, you know, we, we, have to, we have to kind of look, crossways at these guys and go something's something's fishy i was really glad to see this though i i even had to yell from my husband to look i said is that brother daniels is that brother daniels his family have been going to him for a long long time and i i just uh the minister that that baptized me the one that married us the one that baptized us together and and everything is uh mr it's minister swain which is out of he's out of ohio but he always said that when speaking in tongue that you need an interpreter, and I did notice that a lot in the church. That you right. know there was a lot of tongue, but no one was repeating, you know, telling us what he was saying. And I, I remember that from being a small child, that some, you know, that that shouldn't be happening. Someone's supposed to be interpreting. That's, that's exactly right. Let's just go ahead while we got you on the phone. Let's just go uh-huh. ahead and, and pull this up for uh, for everyone to see. Yeah. First uh, Corinthians fourteen twenty six, Paul said, "How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Let all things be done unto edifying." Verse twenty seven. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, now that's a tongue that he hasn't learned, he hasn't studied to learn it. Let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Amen. See? So, you, I mean, there's got to be an interpreter. Now, do you want me to go ahead and play this clip of what Bill Daniel says? Yeah, I, I did see that. But, but I mean, but I, I've been right there in the church before and, and knowing that that's, you know, that's their right. church, things like that. I'm not going to sit and right. judge everyone. But I knew... I, I had that feeling the whole time I was there because I knew whenever I grew up in church that how my minister done. And actually, there was a few women that jumped up and would do that in our church, you know, when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. And they started talking in tongue, and our pastor would stop them. He stopped them. Really? And I've, a, I've actually seen him take a few people out and talk to them and stuff. But he made that clear, but I noticed that happened a lot in Brother Daniel's church. Right, right. But I, I, I would like <clears throat> to bring some... I'm going to bring a few people with me. These right. are people that really, they go there, and I guess they just don't see it. But seeing you really helped out because, uh, you know, I thought it was just me. I don't go there anymore or anything. But I figured maybe if I can get a couple up there, they can see what you, you know, you're showing. I've actually called and left messages. I, none of them's picking up to tell them to tune in on this channel. Right. So they can see this. Well, I'll tell you what, if you would like... Uh uh, if you would like a copy of this program, I'll do my best to get you one. We kind of had a, I didn't set my recorder to get it tonight, but I think, uh, I, I think I can still get a DVD from it, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a DVD of this program, and you can give to them. There we go. Well, you, thank you very you, much. I, That'll I, be fine. I'll tell you what, I'll put you on hold, and That's you tell, fine. and you tell, you tell Brandon how many copies of this you want. In other words, if you have five friends, I'll give you five copies. I'll give you okay. six, one for you and five friends. Yeah, it's, it's his family, but they, you know what I can remember? I can remember them showing me their, um, they got like casings, which I have, you know, of, 
of different ministers, things like that, things I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. But I noticed they have quite a few of Brother Daniels, and I just couldn't see when you're tied on money, you know, you give your part to the Lord, but I want it to go to the Lord's work. I don't want it to go for this. Right. Well, I bet you, I'll I tell you anything, uh, you know, you could, uh, uh, you could buy a whole lot of DVDs for what uh -huh. they paid for those DVDs from Bill Daniels. And, we'll, yeah. and you can tell them, you know, y'all bought Bill's DVDs, but this came free. And, I sure will. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to put you on hold, and you tell, give, give him your name and address and phone number and, and all that good stuff and, and how many copies you want, and we'll get you some copies of this program. That would be great, and God bless okay. you. Okay. All right. You have a good night. Yeah. All right. You're on the word from the Lord. Yeah, James. It's Dorothy. How you doing? Hey, Dorothy. I'm doing well. Good. Um, I know your heart's not broke because of the <laughs> zeal you have for the Lord, but I know you do hurt for all the souls that are out there that haven't heard it yet. Um, I was wondering about the um, about Proverbs 23, 23. I was wondering if you could read that. It kind of something Bill Daniels. I don't know if he knows it or not. All right. Buy the truth and sell it not. Yeah. Buy the truth and make all the money off of it you can. That's, that's the Bill Daniels version. Right. And like I said, not just Bill Daniels. Just say it's you know a lot of other individuals too. You know, let's go ahead and be fair. Okay. It's, Love you. Love you, uh, James. All right. Have a good night. Thanks, Dorothy. All right. One of our sisters in uh, in Danville. So, uh, all right. Well, you know, th this is what we're talking about. So let me go back to uh, the previous caller and what she brought up about speaking in tongues, and then we read that. Because what I'd like to do is, is go ahead and let you listen to what uh, Mr. Daniel said about speaking in tongues. Now listen carefully to what he says. I hope that you can hear this. I noticed you were speaking in tongues tonight at times. Um, did that just come on there? Or? Yes, yes, that's, that's just the Spirit of the Lord moving on me okay. when that happens. Did you have sure. a well, the Bible says when you're speaking to the Lord in an unknown tongue, you're speaking to God. So that was the spirit within me conversing. Doesn't the Bible also say that if one speaks in tongues, then uh, you should have an interpreter? Yes, if it's a prophecy. If it's a prophecy to edify the church. One country you're speaking to church though, right? I mean, if I was prophesying, there's a difference in tongues. The unknown tongue is prophetic tongues. Okay, I was having a hard time hearing a lot of background noise. We were dismissing, and uh, but basically the question was, when you started, were, were you speaking in tongues? He said, yes, uh, that the Spirit just came on me, and I started speaking in tongues. And then the cameraman asked, well, where was your interpreter? And he said, I didn't need an interpreter because I was speaking to God. Now, do you remember what we just read right here? If any man is speaking, he needs an interpreter. And notice this. If there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Now, I don't care what you're saying. If there's no interpreter, I don't care who you're talking to. If there's no interpreter, you have to shut up. You have to hush. I don't care if you're talking to God or yourself. I don't care if you're talking to the man in the moon. If there's no interpreter, you have to be quiet. Paul says there has to be an interpreter, even if you're talking to God. So, you know, that's a kind of a, uh, that's one of those double talks, one of those, those nice little sugar sticks they like to use as well. That, I'm just talking to God. I'm just talking to God. Well, that doesn't fly when you compare the Bible. You're on the word from the Lord. James. Yes, sir. Johnny Robertson. Hey, Johnny. Hey, I'm over here in Michigan, and uh, I just want to let you know that people in Michigan are viewing the broadcast. Uh, we're trying to let them know that they can now get it online. Right. And so we have a whole crowd of people sitting in front of the TV, uh, people from Tennessee, uh, people from Michigan, people from uh, Virginia. We're all watching the broadcast that you're doing, and uh, we're just wanting you to know that it's uh, very si exciting. Well, I'm glad, it, glad it's going that way. Uh, while, we're, while we got you on the phone, let's talk about the tent meeting for a little bit. All right. Uh, we, it sounds like a lot of people from the Danville area are are getting ready to come out, and I know we're going to be knocking doors pretty much in full force uh, starting tomorrow. Our group's going out, and I think Tuesday we're going out. Uh, what's kind of the 
the thought process on the on the tent meeting? Well, uh, my plan is to be back in Virginia on uh, Monday night and gear back up again on Tuesday. Start um, our class over there at eight twenty at uh, one twenty American Boulevard on Tuesday night, and uh, just you know immediately begin to do the follow up work that it takes to get the tent up. And so Monday night we should begin preaching. All right, and um, uh, any uh, any particular lessons that might pique their interest? Well, first off, we're going to start on where the glory of God really is in Danville. You know, everybody is claiming that uh, God's glory is involved in all of these, or God's pleasure is with all of these different religions, and we're going to demonstrate from the Bible. I, there just will be no refuting it. Any preacher that wants to can come out from the community and uh, try to refute what we're going to say, but we're going to demonstrate that God's glory is not really on all of these uh, confusing different religions made by man. The city of churches. Right, Danville city of churches. So uh, to the gentleman that called in a little while ago, James, we actually have uh, extra uh, why I'm a member of the church by Leroy Brownlow, and we'll have uh, him a copy on Tuesday night. Okay, well, he said he was going to be out of town, and that's why I was asking. I, I figured we could get a copy of by that time, but... Uh... Uh, he, he said he's going to come over to the to the Bible studies, but I don't know. I don't think he's going to be back in town on Tuesday. So, uh, but he definitely says he's coming to the tent. So, I, I think we we both know who that is. So we j just set him aside a copy. Well, the lady from Dry Fork too. If she wants to come on over to the class, I'll have her a copy as well. Okay. All right. And and you know these books, James. This is a this is a great gift from the Church of Christ. It, they're very they're very expensive books just right, to be given are. away. They are. And we certainly want to give away as many as we can so that we can enlighten, you know, give people a chance to study the Bible. Right. As a matter of fact, just for anybody listening, on, uh, on Sunday mornings, we're actually studying uh, lessons that uh, correspond or go along with that book. We're not necessarily using the book, but we are. We, our, our brethren do have that book, and they know that if they read through that lesson and study it, then there will be a lesson... Uh, along uh, along those same lines, you know, Sunday morning. So if you're if you're in the area and you want to um, worship with us here in Reedsville, we'll be studying through some of those lessons as well. So you know, just kind of another way to to study through that book. It's, it, it's a very good book. All right. Well, I'm going to get off here and just uh, want to say hello to the folks in Indianapolis, Indiana, the Shelby Road, Shelbyville Road Church of Christ. They're also now watching the broadcast uh, as a result of knowing that it's online, and so you're doing a good job. All right. All right. Thanks, brother. God speak. Good night. All right. <clears throat> so, uh -oh. again, be gearing up for the tent meeting. I know we're kind of jumping from subject to subject here, but that's fine uh, because we're certainly excited about that and hope you are, are anxious to come out. You're on the word from the Lord. Yes, James. I wonder if you could answer a question for me. I'll try. Okay. Uh, within the churches of Christ, during uh, communion, uh, during the diff um, within the different uh, gatherings from city to city, is there a strict adherence to one cup during the uh, communion or multiple cups? Well, some some uh, churches of Christ, uh, they're we call them one cuppers. That they use one cup, but the Bible doesn't say one cup. It talks about the content, not the cup. Okay, so, but what about in Danville or Martinsville or the 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 churches that meet in Danville, Reedsville, and Martinsville and and Ruffin that we're associated with, we don't use one cup. Or I say I use one cup, but somebody else uses a different cup. How's okay, that? Okay, so so that's multiple cups. Right, right. Is that is that enough within the Church of Christ to for one group not to associate with the other? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm saying I'm gonna say the majority of Church of Christ are not do not use one cup. Okay, thank you very much. All right, all right, <coughs> all right. <coughs> um, interesting call. Okay, so uh, uh, guys like Bill Daniels, and you know, and friends, there's there's more than just Bill. You know, again, I don't want to think that I'm picking on Bill. But these guys are a dime a dozen. And just to let you know what kind of people these are, all right, we got another call, so we'll stop. Okay, you're on the word of the Lord. Not there. Uh, just to let you know how these people really feel about you, these, uh, 
these people that pal around with guys like like uh, uh, Bill Daniels, they really don't, I don't believe, have much respect for you. Uh, they're the ones who will actually uh, treat you like, uh, I don't know, small, insignificant. Here is, here is how they would say, or this is how they would treat you. Well, I got another call, so I'm going to try to take it. You're on a word from the Lord? Yes, James. I lost your uh, cell phone number. Can I get it again, please? My cell phone number? Yes, sir. Okay. 276? Uh, 276? 340? 340? 2653. 2653. I'll try to get in touch with you later, sir. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Come out to the tent. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, this, this lady right here, there's going to be some that are not necessarily associated with Bill Daniels, but I want you just to listen carefully how she feels about you or how she would feel about you. You're in the orange. Come here. Put your Bible down. Because God said, find somebody so stupid to do this. Just put your shoes over there. You're on holy ground. Don't worry. It's called Ain't nobody going to steal it. Glory to God. I think they pay tithes in here. Praise God. But God said that you're crazy enough to do this. I want you to just come over a little bit more. Because God told me to tell you, spin around like a whirlwind. Spin. So you can't spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around. Because God said, I'm spinning you into some miracle. I'm spinning you into some blessing. I'm spinning you. I got to spin around. Me. Oh, there it is. Hey, come up. Oh, shut up. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stupid. Uh, it takes, the Lord just does little simple things in my life. I'm well, I'm going to say this, friends. Uh. You know, if you come, if you will come out of these churches, you won't be stupid. And we certainly won't tell you you're stupid. We won't treat you like you're stupid. But, you know, if you want to be stuck on stupid, you'll just stay in these churches and let them take your money, let them mistreat you, let them, let them talk bad about you. You want to work in the Lord? All right. All right. Sorry about that. <clears throat> well, friends, we're about out of time. Uh, well, here he comes again. Last call. You want to work in the Lord? Yeah, I got a question for you. Make it quick. All right. I'm going to make it quick and simple. All right. I know she was showing her a while ago, uh, one of the prophets there was, uh, had his hands on you. He was sitting there talking to you in church, and y'all had a camera there, and he was saying something to you. Mm -hmm. And you was telling him what he said. He said, you know, you got God's going to heal your broken heart or right. whatnot. Now, I can tell you just about where I think he got the idea that you were sitting in there and you had a troubled heart. I've seen you here on television. I know she got a wedding ring on your hand there. Right. You sitting in church. Where was your wife at? She was at home. Yep. There. See, that's the way you preach. A lot of these preachers, I've, I've gone to several I can assure you, here. I can assure you, my wife was not brokenhearted that I was there. Oh, well, I can't tell you, but you sitting there in church with a wedding ring on your finger, a lot of times, a lot of times these preachers will take notice. They, a lot of preachers notice stuff like that. You know, you take a man sitting in church with a wedding ring on his finger, but his wife ain't there. Well, one thing, sir, I wasn't there to worship. God in a vain way like all these people were. Yeah. Number one. Number two, my wife was not broken hearted that I was there and I wasn't broken hearted that she wasn't there yeah. because I wouldn't really want to expose her or my kids to this kind of foolishness that goes on in these churches. So I understand it. And, and I got uh, one more question and I'm going to let right, you go. All right. I know y'all had the, the cameras in the church. Are these preachers, are they aware that y'all got these cameras in these churches? Or well, sneak if, them in there? if Bill Daniels wasn't aware that that camera was in the church, in that church building, or in that building, I, he's, you know, well, uh, he's missing it because the man was walking around filming. Yeah. So, and that's what I said at the very beginning of the show. I don't know why, like Faith Memorial Baptist, I don't know why they have a fit about people bringing cameras in because this group of people said, you know, fine, you know, record it. Oh, yeah. So they don't have anything to hide, which, you know, I, I can appreciate that. But uh, some of these individuals, when you walk in, you know, they're scared to death that you're going to tell someone what goes on behind the walls. So I don't know. Maybe they got something to hide. Yeah, well, they may have. I don't know. But, you know, I'm Baptist myself. I've claimed to be Baptist for 42 years. And, you know, I'm just, to be honest with you, I'm just a walking God's miracle that I'm living anyway for the birth defects and stuff that I was born with when I was born. Um, well, so, well, well, let me ask you this. Why are you in the Baptist church? 
It's just my belief. I've got a brother who is a, he's a, a he's sort of on a Baptist evangelist style. He goes around, holds little okay. meetings well, and whatnot. We've held, we've actually held tent meetings on our property. All right. Well, let me ask you this. You said it's your belief, basically your belief. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Yep. Belief comes by hearing the word of God. Now, where did you hear God say anything about the Baptist church? Well, you know, different denominations. I don't, I don't go by the denomination. I, I know I claim that I'm Baptist, but um, I just... But you didn't hear God say it. On what the preacher is saying when he's a preaching, I mean, any anybody can take their Bible and follow along with that preacher. Until now, he gets to the part about the church. In Rockingham County that I used to go listen to, he passed away a few years ago, and his name was Alfred Goins. Now, that was a God-fearing man right there. But he was in the Baptist church. In this, in this county, it was Alfred Goins. But he was in the Baptist church, and that's not in the oh, Bible. he was a um, Pentecostal, I think. All right, that's not in the Bible either. Uh, so, well, I know he preached from the King well, James Version. Well, I tell you what, though, but he, went, he didn't preach about the Pentecostal church from the King James Version because it's not in the Bible. Well, see, I don't, and that's I what we're getting to. That's, see, that's the problem that we're having with all these people is they want to say, well, we believe the Bible, but when we can't find what we're doing in the Bible, then we'll, we'll just believe something else. Yeah. So, well, listen, I've got, I've got to wrap up. I'm two minutes over. Well, I understand. Th thanks for your call. Yes, thanks sir. for your call. All right. All right, friends, good night. It's, a, it's been a good night. I want to remind you of the, the tent meeting coming to Danville, October 20th, uh, Mount Cross Road next to the Leggett's. Until we meet again, have a good night, and always make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. I couldn't stay in Johnny at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them. Some of y'all, get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. As your pastor, I am telling you, please. Don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy here on Wednesday night or Sunday night, I know I've been called that. I left my derby and I left my cane, but I did bring my Bible. If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? New Times, Sunday night at 8.30. And one thing the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals is proud of, the new building is already paid for. Most of the animals are free roaming. Mm -hmm. They can play with each other. They can play with staff members. Um, we bring 